I hate long intros, man. Y'all can read the Look title. at me, sure. Look at me, sure. I'm the captain now. Ain't that the damn truth? Come on, Kayla! Now, I usually record these recap videos on the weekend, but I had to come see y'all today for a couple reasons. One, I'm actually going to the game on Saturday versus the Bulls, so maybe I'll vlog it and do something special. I'll see. But also, because we have to talk about what the Miami Heat, no, what Caleb Martin did to the Milwaukee Bucks last night. Now, the Heat actually went 1-1 one one this week. I'll put the scores up right here, but I don't really want to talk about that Memphis game. I mean, I guess I will. It sucked. It was exactly like the game last year when Memphis came to Miami. That's the game when Dylan Brooks turned into Jordan, Curry, Bryant, Olajuwon, James. If y'all saw the random scrub heat killer video, y'all know what I'm talking about. The link is out here. Dylan Brooks popped off that game. He were basically getting blown out from start to finish. That's basically exactly what happened in this game. The disappointing thing, though, is that Jimmy, of course, came back from his tailbone injury and he got hurt three seconds into the game. But the thing that got me upset about that is he got hurt because Jaron Jackson Jr. shoved him. And then later in the game, P.J. Tucker got a flagrant for shoving Steven Adams. Now, how is Jaron Jackson Jr. pushing Jimmy a no-call, but PJ pushing Big Steven Adams is a flagrant? It's just way too lopsided. But really, with just that Memphis game in general, Memphis was playing with so much more energy than us. I don't know if that game was an indictment on the Heat or an indictment on Memphis because they're 5-0 and since John Moran hasn't played. But not only that, like 5-0 is, is cool. That's actually kind of crazy, whatever. But they haven't been down in any of those games. Like Memphis has led start to finish in all five of the games since John Morant's been out. So that team is just on another level right now. So I'm hoping most of that game is just because Memphis is on something else and Miami just didn't have it that night. You could see though Memphis's young guys played with a lot more energy than us, which sucked. They were full court pressing the whole game. Meanwhile, the Heat weren't playing no press at all. And especially at the end of quarters, they need to press because there was a couple buckets that Memphis had. There's seven seconds left in the quarter and they inbound and the heater letting them walk all the way down the court you can't do that with seven seconds left you got to pressure the ball so they can't get into their sweet spot i think d'anthony mellon hit an easy runner to end the half just because the heat let him walk all the way down the court they got to do a better job pressing that when there's only a few seconds left in the quarter or the half but now let's talk about the game of the week versus the milwaukee bucks now let me tell y'all how i experienced this game all right so i was designated driver for my girl and her friends they were going to some bar and i'd like to say that i didn't want to go to the bar because i believed in the heat i believe they could win so i wanted to stay home and watch it but i actually thought the heat would get blown out because they didn't have jimmy and bam i really didn't want to go to the bar because it was a country bar and y'all know i ain't really rocking with the country music i don't want to get copyrighted jimmy jimmy i'm sorry if you listening man i ain't got nothing against luke bryan he seems like an awesome dude but we ain't rocking with country music on this channel i'm sorry but yeah so i took them to the country music bar and i didn't really feel like driving all the way home so i figured i'm gonna go get some food i'm gonna sit in the parking lot for a few hours and watch the game so i got some good food from miller's ale house shout out to them i sat in the car and i had a great time watching that game it actually worked out because i was in the back of the parking lot i was able to scream as loud as i wanted didn't have no neighbors around me didn't have no one by me i'm screaming Strews, daddy so loud i was worried that somebody would hear me and they would be concerned but nah it was all good but we need to have a talk about king caleb Martin. You know, the NBA and Adam Silver have been busy investigating the Miami Heat for tampering, trying to get Kyle Lowry. No, you know what they need to investigate? They need to investigate these. No, 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 no. no. They need to investigate how the Miami Heat got Caleb Martin on a two way contract. Do y'all believe that? A two way contract. Caleb Martin is getting paid just under $500,000 this year. And here's a list of all the NBA players that are making more than him. Wait a minute. I don't see Caleb Martin on this list. Yeah, that's right, because like I said, he is a two-way player. He's not even on the list. Can we give him a three-way contract? Is that a thing? Because whatever we can give him, that man deserves. Now, I understand that they're not converting him to a regular deal for salary cap reasons, and they can't quite do that yet while staying under the cap. So he will get a standard deal in no time. But how awesome is that dude? First of all, he looks hella fresh Thank with you the very braids much. and the black mashup jersey. He looks dope. So did KZ, by the way, with the braids, but we'll get into him later. And he just came out of nowhere six to eight from three and the funny thing about that is throughout the last couple of weeks you know is caleb has been hitting some threes and after every time caleb hits a three eric reed always says wow martin with another three he's known as a slasher i'm like e reed how many threes caleb martin got to hit before you stop saying that so hopefully last night was the night where e reed can stop saying that about him because my boy could shoot but that don't mean that he ain't athletic as hell baby oh my god some vicious dunks last night including the dagger to seal the game to end the bucks once and for all oh i wish i was in that arena that place was absolutely rocking 
And like I said, I'm going Saturday, so hopefully they can keep that energy and they didn't waste it all on that game versus Milwaukee, but we'll see. But yeah, there's really not much else I could say about Caleb Martin besides he is a baller. You know, we thought we got the worst twin. Supposedly, this Cody dude was better. I can't imagine he's better than what Caleb Martin is doing. I just don't know how the Heat keep finding this, guys. They really deserve a lot more credit than they're getting for finding these guys out of absolutely nowhere. Outside of Caleb, like everybody else, I was mad at Lowry going into halftime. He wasn't shooting good, but like the Miami Heat tweeted out, Lowry read our tweets at halftime. That boy came in the third quarter and balled out. He took some bad threes, some really deep threes, but I guess they were kind of heat checks. I mean, not really, but kind of. How about PJ Tucker's passing, man? That boy got his dimer badge last night. You know what? Excuse me, not PJ Tucker, PJ Olajuwon, because that boy had the crazy footwork doing spin moves, hook shots, everything. I, I couldn't believe what I was witnessing from PJ Tucker. Now, he's had a strong year, especially offensively, but most of that's been floaters. I mean, he's had a couple post touches and jump hooks, but he was showing the footwork last night and his passing was impeccable. He really looked like Bam Adebayo out there with some of his passing because he was finding guys on the cuts, on the pick and rolls. It was just absolutely gorgeous from PJ Tucker and he was absolutely phenomenal last night. So we talked about Martin, we talked about Lowry, we talked about PJ. Let's talk about Struess daddy himself, Max Struess, going off in that fourth quarter. I've been wondering for a while, Max Struess really hasn't been getting that many minutes. I mean, Caleb has been getting his minutes, which I get, Caleb's been playing well. But also Gabe Vincent's been getting his minutes, I never really liked that. Gabe Vincent shown flashes, but not as many flashes as Struess has to me. But Struess came in the fourth quarter, hit his first couple threes, and Spo knew exactly what was happening. Spo did not touch that lineup the rest of the game. They closed that game with Struess, Caleb, and KZ all out there on the court just because of how well they were really balling. But yeah, Struess had 16 points in the fourth quarter, 16. And that's not to say that I don't love Duncan Robinson as well. Y'all know I love Duncan Robinson too, and I really wish Heat Nation would lay off him. That is a lot of money sitting on the bench because Duncan never plays fourth quarters anymore barely plays second halves at all but I still like Duncan as well I really liked after the game PJ Tucker in his post game press conference he was like I wear number 17 because that's how many games I played in my rookie year I didn't get a chance as a young guy y'all young guys you know talking to Caleb and Struess and KZ and those guys y'all young guys actually have a chance to play you need to step up and prove what you can do because that opportunity can be rare to get and man those young guys really stepped up tonight we saw a little bit of Omer didn't do too much he didn't really come back in because when KZ came in he was playing so 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 well easily KZ Akpala's best game in the Heat uniform I think he had like 10 points nine rebounds but he had a couple blocks and his defense all night was just tremendous and he was really guarding Giannis he was guarding a little bit of Bobby Portis help I mean Bobby Portis was eating, but we'll get into, you know, we'll talk about Bobby Portis real quick. If y'all watched the last video, I talked about the game we played the Bucks last week, and I hate Bobby Portis, man. There was a span where Bobby Portis missed a layup, okay, got a rebound, scored, flexed on Tyler Hero, okay, like he's so strong for flexing on Tyler Hero, and then he missed the free throw. Just what an absolute bum. Between him and Thanasis, that team has a bunch of bums, man. But back to KZ, it was really nice to see him have a game where he actually looked competent. Because most of the time, like, he doesn't even suck. He just looks like he doesn't belong, quite frankly. And I love KZ, because even when he's on the bench, he's always into the game. He's always getting hyped. So he really seems like a great teammate. He just really hasn't been able to put it together yet. And he was a team high against Milwaukee in the plus minus. He was plus 23. So that's not to say that I think KZ Akpala is an NBA player now, but... It's a step in the right direction. And if anything, it proves that it's possible for him to actually play somewhat competent, even though Bobby Portis was killing him. So what a fun game, man. Really just an all-time game, an all-time heat performance. And this is a game that we're gonna remember for a long time. We're gonna tell our kids about the Caleb Martin game, where Caleb Martin outscored the two-time MVP, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Not, he didn't only outscore him, he almost doubled his points. Just unreal game. Even seeing Oladipo into it was so cool to see. All around awesome game. It was on national television, ESPN, even though I watch Bally Sports. Always rock with my boys, John and Karate. It's always a Bally Sports situation in my household. Shout out John Karate. But it was an all time performance again. Something I didn't expect, but it was a big win because they can't let this thing get too out of hand before Jimmy and Bam come back. So I'm going to the game Saturday versus Chicago Bulls. Originally got the tickets a couple months ago. Thought it was gonna be a huge matchup between a couple powerhouses, but Jimmy will be out most likely. Bam is definitely out. The Rosen's definitely out. They got a few other guys on that team with COVID. So it's not gonna be quite the matchup that I expected, but hopefully it's still a good game. The Heat definitely need to bring it like they did against Milwaukee, because if not, Vucevic will kill us and Zach Levine will still kill us too. Maybe I'll post a special video from it. Maybe I'll vlog, maybe I'll do a little bit. I do plan on doing some promo and talking to a lot of people there and trying to get some subs. So if you someone that I met at the game and you found my channel, comment down below, let me know, man. If you're new to this channel, I do recap videos every single week and talk about all the games from the previous video to this one. So make sure y'all sub 
subs so you don't miss it. We're over 700 subs now, less than 300 to my initial goal of 1,000. After that, I can apply to the YouTube Partnership Program. Been getting a lot of love from everybody, so thank y'all so much. If I didn't meet you at the Heat Game, if you found me through YouTube, if you found me through Reddit, through Twitter, leave a comment down below to let me know as well. Make sure to check out my Wednesdays with Will series. We got two videos up right now. One of them ranking the top 10 players Miami Heat fans hate the most. The other one ranking the top 10 random scrub Miami Heat killers of all time. Shout out to Miami Heat Beat for giving me some love on the Twitter, man. That shout out was huge. I got a lot of views from that, so that's much appreciated as well. But last but not least, shout out to the Heat Discord, man. They got the greatest heat culture community on the internet outside of this channel. The link for that is at the top of this description. So if I witness the heat lose in person on Saturday, I might be too depressed to make another video. So you may never see me again. Who knows? You'll find out next week or not. I'll see you later. Bye. I need bigger stay, 80s land. I so tank when the pain again. I escape from these famous lands. When it's too much in the wheel dungeon. Damn. What if I know? Financially free be my idol. Probably get it than I lie low. So once wish that I die slow. Hold up, one letter fade me. Got an impact with elevation. When a nigga make a leave a foundation. Hand out keys, high education. Yeah.